Hello and welcome to the Team Intelligent webinar series overview. This is a short summation and an invitation to plug in and give our series a listen. As a response to the COVID-19 situation, our Team Intelligent co-founders have compiled their best data and counsel on leading under VUCA pressure and crisis. They did this as a way to contribute thought leadership in the talent management and leadership space. It is our hope that you'll join us for webinars one and two that are evidence-based offerings to help you lead or bring the best knowledge, skills, and attributes to the table in these VUCA times. Webinar one is called VUCA, Leading Under Pressure and Crisis. And it's about VUCA itself, black swan situations, the detail and the meaning around pressure and crisis itself, as well as Team Intelligence IP around what matters most or best and most impactful practices at the individual contributor, manager, and leadership levels. Webinar two is called VUCA Proofing Your Enterprise. And that's the what's so, or the seven things that matter most under pressure and crisis, as well as some advice on how to do those things. And then there's the now what, kind of a call to action around VUCA proofing your organization. Both Team Intelligent webinars can be found one of two ways. First way is to go to YouTube and search for Team Intelligent. The second way is that you can go to our Team Intelligent webinar and click the YouTube icon on the top left corner of the page. Now, to pique your interest in both the webinars, we'd like to spend a couple of minutes giving you a sampler, and we'll explore the evidence across all organizational levels and what matters most for handling pressure and crisis. But let me first do a couple of quick introductions. I'm Lisa Marie Hansen. I'm Chief Learning and Marketing Officer and moderator of both webinars. And our series features the thought leadership and the council of Team Intelligent co-founders, Roger Pierman and Bob Eichinger. And I'm just gonna ask you to take it away and convey the essence about leading under VUCA. Thank you, Lisa Marie. As all of us know, uh, VUCA is now a well-known well concept. It stands for volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. There's regular VUCA, which we're facing all the time and you can do some reasonable planning for. And then there's the black swan VUCA situation that we're in right now with the pandemic. When you look at the characteristics of managing against a VUCA situation, uh, we have found that there are 10 characteristics of managing in times of pressure and crisis. So they're quite obvious, as all of you should know, but it's being in charge of an emergency situation, working against uncertainty, limited time frame, high expectations from others, managing various stakeholders. It's a high visibility activity. You have to be agile and adjustive to be able to do it. You have to seek and get any help you can to solve it. And you have to be interpersonally savvy and commanding to get people to do things they've never done before working against VUCA. So VUCA comes in with volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. And what we're looking for is the vision to stabilize the volatility the understanding to go up against the uncertainty, clarity and caring to stabilize the complexity, and agility to deal with the ambiguity. So we did a project to figure out what exactly are the skills that are necessary to be successful, and Roger will explain that for us. Thank you, Bob. As uh, Bob said, we 
did a deep dive into our libraries of practices and roles, we wanted to know what are the particular practices at the individual contributor level, the manager level, and the leader level that would in fact make the biggest difference in responding to pressure crisis moments and black swan events. That analysis is you uh, get to learn our library uh, would cover 30 roles in 92 practices. You see the number of roles and practices we have in each library. But as you would suspect, all of those roles and practices while serving effectiveness in the place where you are in the organization, there are specific roles, uh, specific practices uh, that we highlight uh, the particular practices that are related to pressure and crisis moments. So <clears throat> as we went through each of our libraries, we took the pressure crisis uh, characteristics, which Bob shared a moment ago, and we started mapping uh, those behaviors against the particular practices within each library. Uh, the result of that was we were able to, in fact, identify the practices that made the biggest difference. So for example, as you can see in, in uh, the individual contributor library, developing resilience and resourcefulness came at the top. You see the list with CASAM, with communicating effectively and responsibly at the top, with CASAL, uncertainty and ambiguity comfort. As you see the long list, uh, we identified as absolutely essential to be doing uh, as you are responding to the pressure crisis moment. Now, in addition, we also ranked ordered uh, the practices within each of the libraries and we identified not only what is the most important, but what is next most important. And as you can see from this particular example from CASAM, uh, all of our practices are organized by various domains and you can see that there are some most important practices um, that are bold faced and they're uh, the less next most important are uh, the typical type set that you see uh, in the column under next important. So we did this for every single library and we used all of that information to feed into a word cloud and as you know how word clouds work, the more a word is um, thematically important, the larger that word shows uh, on the word cloud. And so as we uh, did this analysis, it certainly enabled us to begin to see the particular terms and themes across all levels that led us to some very specific courses of action. So we did a more formal cluster analysis of the 30 or so of the 90 practices that are needed for successful careers along a career line from individual contributor to senior officer. And what we found is that there are 12 things that are necessary to get an organization or an enterprise through a VUCA situation especially a black swan VUCA situation such that we're in now. So it's the productive management of conflict because uh, VUCA situations bring about a lot of anxiety and frustration and conflict. Staying active, decisive and productive under uncertainty and ambiguity. We're seeing all of that today. Staying resilient and resourceful, moving forward, keeping focus increasing communication, continuing problem solving, critical thinking and systems thinking, robust collaboration and bartering, getting all of the help you need to solve a problem we've never had before. And because a black swan VUCA puts you into a situation almost no one has ever seen before, you have to scan for creative and innovative initiatives. That's all detailed in uh, the VUCA webcast number one. In VUCA webcast number two, we move on to say, okay, if those are the seven things that are necessary, what should you do about it? Well, there are four things you can do. Number one, if you're lucky enough as a supervisor, manager, or a leader 
if you've got some or all of these seven, the advice and counsel is pretty simple. Uh, do these more, do them as good as you ever have done. If that's not the case, if you have some of it, uh, do as much as you can. Uh, we have developmental suggestions in VUCA 2, the second webcast that you can look at in more detail. And if you don't have enough of it, and because we're time restricted, that is, it's unlikely you're going to develop these in any short period of time, delegate. Go find people who are good at this and have them do what you're not good at. Then we found a fourth one that was a surprise. So about halfway through this project, Roger and I looked at our fourth tool, which is called KSAP, which is knowledge, skills, and attributes of people with potential. So we found out that using high potentials during this time period of pressure was useful. Next. So if you look at the seven things that are necessary on the left, Roger and I studied the characteristics of high potentials. What are the common things that high potentials have? Uh, that's reviewed in more detail in the longer webcast. But there are 12 characteristics that are common among people who are authentic, verified high potentials. And it literally struck us one afternoon when we looked at these two lists is that these are the exact characteristics on the right that you would need to do the 10 general characteristics on the left of pressure and crisis management. And more specifically, the seven things you need to do, which is the cluster analysis of the 30 coded practices, this looks like the same list. So, what we found halfway through this project is that verified authentic high potentials are exactly the population you would need to lean on and deploy during times of pressure and crisis or VUCA or a black swan VUCA as we are now in. So as Bob suggested in our other two longer uh, webinars, we went into detail about how to VUCA proof your enterprise uh, for the future, how you can manage your high potentials with precision today using our CASAP library to help you do the VUCA proofing for tomorrow. Uh, this project and this analysis has led us to remind you that in fact, when you know who your high potentials are and where they are, you can have access to them and in fact, get them involved in forums when possible, either a digital network for idea generation or various task forces that are important for us uh, tackling uh, urgent problems, especially when you get them with seasoned professionals. Um, also, there are those who have enough experience that putting them in charge of key elements of a pressure crisis moment um, is the most effective thing to do. And most certainly, you want to invite them along on this journey in pressure crisis moments because the lessons they will extract will have tremendous value for the future. Well, thank you, Bob and Roger, and thank you very much to everyone listening. We hope that this sampler whet your appetite so that you'll plug in and you'll listen to the two full webinars and create a tangible plan and get detailed tips from the development resources where all of this stuff came from. Again, YouTube is where you can access the broadcast. Search for Team Intelligent uh, next time that you're on YouTube or you can go to the Team Intelligent website and click on our YouTube icon. Additionally, we'd invite you to access complimentary IP samples of our materials or follow us via social networks as well. So with that, from everyone here at Team Intelligent, thanks for listening, stay safe, and be well. <laughs>